I've created this WinCC version 8 demo project to show you how indirect addressing works in WinCC. Indirect addressing is a feature available in all versions of WinCC, and originally it was the only method available to create reusable pop-up screens and equipment interfaces. However, we now have tag prefix and face plates that allow you to more easily create reusable equipment interfaces and pop-up screens, but I do find some projects are still using indirect addressing. So in this demo, we can select a given motor and we can show us operating details in this pop-up window. And you can see I can turn the selected motor on and off as well. The label near the selected motor changes color so the operator can quickly see which motor is currently selected. Champion level members of this channel can download this example project and many other code examples. Click the join button for details and if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please consider doing so if you find this content useful. In the lower right hand corner of the screen, you can see how the indirect tags work. These are char tags which can take text and as I click each motor, we're just setting up the indirect tags tags to show the data manager which tags should be referenced and then here under the reference value it shows you the actual values of the motor that is selected. Next I'm going to show you how this demo works and further explain how indirect addressing works in WinCC. Make sure to watch until the end as I explain the pros and cons of using indirect addressing versus tag prefix and faceplates in your project. So if you're ready let's get started. Now let's go back to WinCC Explorer so that we can take a look at how this project is set up. First, let's take a look in tag management. First, we've created a structure type called motor and given it elements which are properties of a motor, speed, temperature, current, power, status, and name, which is the name of the selected motor. If we go to structure tags, you can see that we've created an instance of structure named motor underscore one, two, three, and four. We can look at the structure tag elements and you can see that we have a tag for each element or property of our selected motor. Next, let's take a look at the process screens to see how these tags are used. If you recall, when I select a motor, a dialog pops up and it shows me the element values for the selected motor, and these correlate back to our structure instances. We also have an area which shows the value of our text-based indirect tags to show that they're actually pointing at our selected motor elements. So here, each indirect tag is pointing to its related motor element. And then we also show the referenced value. Finally, the motor label of the selected motor lights up. So let's go into Graphics Designer and see how this is set up. First, I've named each motor to be the same as the name of the structure instance that it represents. So going back into our structure tags, you can see that our structure tags are named the same as the motor. I've done this for convenience. When a motor is clicked, we have a visual basic script that sets up the indirect tags. So we get the name of the selected motor, which is the same as our structure tags, and we just build the tag name and write them into our indirect tags, which again are string based. This effectively sets our indirect tags to point at this selected motor. So if this is motor one, it would be writing in motor1.name, motor1.power. We also have code to set the picture window that shows the dialog just to the right of the selected motor for convenience. So in runtime, when we click a motor, the script will write in the names of each indirect tag the name of the structure tag element that it wants the dialog to show. Now let's go take a look at this pop-up window to see how it dereferences our indirect tags to show the actual values. Going back to Graphics Designer, we will go to our Motor Indirect PDL, and we can look at the tag connections here on these I.O. fields. You can see that the output value is assigned to the Motor Speed Indirect, which is in fact a string tag, but we've checked the indirect checkbox. What this does is tells the WinCC Data Manager, which is the service that delivers tag data to connections on a page, to look inside the string tag for the name of the actual tag it needs to read in order to get the speed for the selected motor. 
we can look at all the tag connections and everywhere we see that we're using this indirect checkbox, it's always going to show the value of the element referenced by the selected motor. Now, if we take a look at our button, we've kind of had to get a little creative here because the button changes color and text based on whichever motor is selected. So we can take a look at this button and we use dynamic dialogues. And what we did was we know that the name of the tag that we want to look at is inside of this motor power indirect tag. And then this function basically returns motor1.power, motor2.power. And then we just call get tag bit on that tag name and then see if it's equal to one. If it is, it turns the button green. If it's not, it turns it red. Looking at the font, it's the same expression, but it sets the tag to off if the selected motor power element is true or on if it's false. And then finally, taking a look at the pressed event, we're using a sticky button here. Our latch down is set to yes. If you want to see how this is configured, I've got a video for you that I'll pop up that you can watch and it shows you how this toggle button works. But we have associated the press property indirectly with a motor power. We check the indirect. That way it knows whether or not to be pressed or not pressed based on whether the selected motor is turned on or off. And looking at the events, we are looking at the press change event and whether or not the pressed is a zero or one, it is putting it indirectly into motor power indirect. And that's how it's writing to the power element of the selected motor. Now looking at our selection labels, if you remember in runtime, when we select a motor, it lights up the label of the motor that's selected. So let's take a look at how we did that. So first, let's notice that I just named the static text labels motor1, motor2, and motor3 with a space instead of an underscore. And I did this again for convenience. If we take a look at the structure tags, I'm just going to filter by the name element. I set the start value for the name element for each motor to the friendly name equivalent motor space 1, 2, 3, and 4. So these static text objects are named the same as the friendly name of each motor, motor one, motor two, and motor three. And we can use that to be reusable. Now there's a Visual Basic script on the font color property. And looking at this script first, we're gonna look at the trigger and this script is going to execute every time a new motor is selected because that changes the indirect tag for the motor name. And basically we go see which structure name element is being referenced by our motor name indirect. So this is gonna end up being motor underscore one dot name, motor underscore two dot name. We store it in the indirect tag name variable. And then we go and read that tag that is referenced by the indirect tag. That should resolve back to the friendly name of the motor, motor space one, motor space two. Well, that's the name of this static text object here. So if the object name that we're on is the same as the friendly name of the selected motor, then we set the font to yellow to indicate that it is the selected motor, or we set it to this charcoal color to indicate that it has been deselected. And so again, if we go into runtime, as we select each motor, the motor name is changing. It gets compared to the name of the label for each motor. And if it's the same, it lights up. And if it's not the same, it deselects it. Now let's take a look at our indirect chart down here. Going back into Graphics Designer, here, of course, we are just looking directly at each of our string tags, which are indirect tags and these read the tag names in the structure of the selected motor to see what tag is being pointed at. So this would be motor one dot name, motor two dot name, this would be motor one dot power, motor two dot power. And then for our reference value it's the exact same tag connection, but we have the indirect checkbox checked. And again this tells the data manager to check inside the string tag for the name of the tag it actually wants to set this property. And it does that. Going back to runtime, you can see as we select each motor, the indirect tags are looking at the correct element names for the selected motor. And then our reference values are showing the actual data for our selected motor. 
So that's basically how indirect addressing works. Basically, we're just writing in the names of tags that we want to see on our interfaces into a string tag. When would we use this? Well, tag prefix is a lot more efficient than indirect tags. One of the things you have to consider is that anytime you use an indirect tag, you are doubling the time it's going to take to actually update your interface because the data manager first has to get the name of the tag it wants to see from the string tag that you're using. And then on the next time cycle, it's going to actually go to that and get the value. So if you set your update cycle on an indirect tag to be half a second, it's only going to actually update at once per second because of the nature of indirect values. Also, it's harder to do animation if you're using indirect. You can use the method that I showed on our motor indirect dialog. And I used dynamic dialog and I had to go get first the indirect value to get the name of the tag and then I had to call another function get tag bit to actually get that so that's two tag calls you can't really use this in animations so it's harder to use if you have a project using indirect addressing and you're not having any issues, certainly don't change it. But if you're having performance issues or you're noticing that tag updates are slow or it's kind of harder to maintain, you may want to try to change that over to tag prefix. So if you want to see how to do this the right way, let's take a look at this next video, which shows you how to do the exact same thing, but using tag prefix. That's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your colleagues.